How do cells control what enters and exits their cytoplasm? To answer this question, we need to understand how the chemicals that enter and exit move on their own, and then we need to examine the properties of the membranes that surround cells that control what goes in and out. First, a quick review on how molecules move. And these are molecules in solutions, since our cells are filled with lots of water and other stuff floating around inside. Uh, we need some vocabulary to help explain how molecules move in solutions. There are two key words here, solutes and solvents. And they're pretty easy to tell apart. Solutes are dissolved in solvents. So, for example, you have these little orange molecules over here that are the solute, and the solvent are these blue molecules over here. And over time, you can see the solute molecule diffusing. Those molecules are spreading out down their concentration gradient uh, towards the bottom of this glass, whereas the solvent molecules are diffusing up towards the top uh, to where they're less concentrated until eventually you've got a beaker full of molecules that are at equilibrium evenly spread out. Diffusion in this setting is pretty instinctually understood. We all know that if you take a whole bunch of stuff and you put it in one area in some water, that naturally over time it will diffuse or spread out until it's evenly distributed. This gets a little bit more complex to understand, though, when we take it in the context of a cell. This is because most cells are surrounded by a plasma membrane or cell membrane such as the one shown here. Cell membranes are made of many kinds of molecules, and those molecules work in concert to control what can enter and what can exit. Let's look at the three major ways a membrane can control what passes across. First off, there is simple diffusion, or diffusion, in which molecules make their way across the membrane all by themselves from high concentration in one area to low concentration in the other. Sometimes molecules can't fit across the membrane by simple diffusion, though, so instead they need facilitated diffusion. French and Spanish speakers know that facile means easy, and so facilitated diffusion is the making of diffusion easier. So you can see these molecules might not be able to get across themselves, but with the help of this protein channel that's embedded in the membrane, now they have a little tunnel that they can pass through. So diffusion of these molecules was made easy thanks to the cell doing facilitated diffusion. Both these two types of transport are called passive transport. Uh, so they don't require any energy, and as long as the channel is there, these molecules can move by themselves. Even without a channel, these molecules can move by themselves. They're just moving right down their concentration gradient. Contrast that with the third type, active transport. You can see there's a difference here because this molecule is less concentrated out here and more concentrated in here. Sometimes the cell wants to fight against diffusion and keep valuable molecules inside. So while these molecules might want to spread out and move in that direction, the cell is fighting that and saying, no, 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 get right back in that cell. I want to keep you here in a high concentration. And in order to do that, the cell runs a process called active transport. Okay, let's look at each of these three types of transport in a little bit more detail. We'll start first with simple diffusion, where molecules just pass across the membrane themselves. And to understand this, we must remind ourselves about the properties of these phospholipids that make up the membrane in this region. Each individual phospholipid has a hydrophilic phosphate head and hydrophobic fatty acid tails. The tails are called hydrophobic because water cannot adhere to them and so the tails tend to face away from water whereas the heads are hydrophilic because water can hydrogen bond with that uh, and so the heads tend to face towards the water so if you take a bunch of phospholipids and you put them in some water they could make any of these structures for example this one with all of the tails facing inward while all of the heads are facing outward touching the water you could also make the structure just to the right of it this guy uh, a little uh, vesicle right here with uh, multiple layers, two layers to be exact, of ph phospholipids. 
forming a bilayer. You can make a bilayer sheet kind of like right here, so the water would be hanging out down here and would be able to attract to the heads, but wouldn't be able to touch the tails in the middle. And then eventually, if you can take these structures and form them into the membrane around an entire cell, kind of like is shown right here. These phospholipids are the first step to controlling what goes in and out of the cell. Because since there's a whole bunch of them, not any molecule could pass through. It's kind of packed in here. The other thing is, the center of the membrane is hydrophobic, which stops several types of molecules from coming through the membrane. What types of molecules can pass across exactly? Well, these tiny blue molecules seem to be able to make it just fine, but these big, hunky, chunky orange molecules don't seem to be able to make it. And that's most likely because they can't quite fit into the gaps between these phospholipids, whereas the small blue uh, solutes are small enough that they can do so. So molecules can move across a membrane by simple diffusion if they are small. Not all molecules get across just because they're small, however. This molecule right here is somewhat sizable, but it can pass across. What is it? It's called testosterone, and it's also a lipid. Lipids, as you know, are all hydrophobic, so even though there's a hydrophobic barrier through the middle of the membrane, the testosterone molecule can still move through because it is also hydrophobic. However, if the molecules are too large, or if they are hydrophilic, typophil, they need to have their diffusion facilitated or made easier. You can see in this diagram, we've got solutes that are highly concentrated up here outside the cell and slightly less concentrated inside the cell. So these molecules would have a tendency to diffuse down their concentration gradient into the cell. However, they're too big or too hydrophilic to make it down this way, so they need a channel to get through. And that's exactly what the cell has put inside its membrane, a protein channel. Protein channels simply make a little tunnel or little passageway so that those solutes can move down their concentration gradient as they would normally. However, the cell needs to do a lot more work if it wants to push molecules against their concentration gradient. Take, for example, in this picture, now the solutes are more concentrated inside the cell. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five solutes down here, whereas there's only three outside. And yet, perhaps this solute is very valuable to the cell, and so the cell wants to hold on to it as much as possible. In this scenario, the cell pumps substances against their concentration gradient by active transport. Active transport requires a different kind of protein called a protein pump. Protein pumps change their shape, so they might start open in this direction so that a solute can go in, and then when they're ready to push the molecule through, they change so that the other end is open, and the solute can continue its journey down into the cell. This is active transport rather than passive transport because it doesn't happen on its own. The molecules, if they had their druthers, would be moving from a high concentration inside the cell to a low concentration outside. Yet the cell is fighting that tendency, so it needs to do so by active transport using a pump. And that requires energy. It won't happen on its own. What's the source of energy? You guessed it. An ATP molecule is required each time the pump pushes a solute. So to recap, if molecules are small or hydrophobic, they can pass across the membrane by simple diffusion, which requires no energy, from a high concentration to a low concentration. If they are large or hydrophilic, they can do the same, but they need a protein channel in the membrane. If the protein channel is there, then they can move by facilitated diffusion, or diffusion made easier. That also does not require energy, so it is a form of passive transport. That contrasts with active transport, which is when the cell wants to move solutes against their concentration gradient from low to high. In order to do that, the cell needs a protein pump, a channel will not suffice, and it also needs ATP to bump into that channel, cause it to change shape, and shove those solutes against their concentration gradient.